Body weight set point, the reason that we struggle to lose weight. Whether we've realized it or not, the body weight set point is the invisible barrier between us and weight loss, or sometimes even intended weight gain. The set point theory claims that our body is programmed to stay within a particular weight range. This applies to both weight loss and weight gain. Most of us have probably noticed this before. We get on a great diet, lose a bunch of weight, only to find ourselves back where we started when we go back to normal. Perhaps we've tried gaining body mass because we wanted to fill out. Turns out that for some people, that's also hard to accomplish and maintain. Sometime, we even find that weight loss or weight gain is easy with the first 10 pounds. Any progress we look for after that becomes difficult to accomplish. It's almost as if our body is resisting the change. This is the result of the body not wanting to leave its determined weight set point. The body weight set point is based on a few different categories. Diet, activity, and lifestyle. Each of these categories has their respective subcategories. Diet, for example, we can look at types of food. The types of food we eat impact hormonal responses, which can impact our overall weight loss or weight gain success. The amount of food. The number of calories we eat can exceed what we need, meaning we need to store the excess as fat. Food timing. The times we eat are important for digestion and metabolism, which can assist in our weight goals. The gut microbiome. The balance of symbiotic bacteria living in our gut are helping us to metabolize and digest food. The second category is activity. We can look at intensity of exercise, which is the percentage of our max heart rate that we reach during exercise, or the amount of work, which is force times distance, that is accomplished. We can also look at amount of exercise, the length of time we spend exercising at an intensity over 60% max heart rate. The third category is lifestyle. Sleep, our ability to recover emotionally, mentally, and physically from life's demands. Stress management, how well we can manage our responsibilities and still have a little fun. Outdoor exposure, how much we get outside to expose ourselves to fresh air, healthy bacteria, and sunlight. The three-legged weight set point stool. Imagine a stool with three legs, each of its legs representing one of the three categories that I listed above, diet, activity, and lifestyle. At the top of the stool sits metabolism, epigenetics, hormones, and digestion. These four categories play into where our body weight set point will be. If one of the legs breaks, these four categories fall off, resulting in a far higher, sometimes even lower, body weight set point. Imagine someone who is overwhelmed by work, works from home, works 12 hours a day, eats anything at any time, snacks throughout the day, doesn't exercise, and is lucky to get six hours of sleep. I've painted an absolute worst case scenario here, but consider the following. This hypothetical person might look extremely out of shape and unhealthy, but what if their body does this to protect them from dying sooner? I would argue that that's precisely what's happening. Our bodies are extremely resi resilient. In this environment of unhealthy habits, the epigenetic switches for fat loss have been shut off. You can think of epigenetics as the environmental dependent on and off controls of our gene expression. Digestion would be off also. His hormones would be all rising and falling unpredictably, and the metabolism would be burning at a low rate. Now imagine the opposite. Someone who's seeking stress but managing it well, is sleeping well, eats with a set feeding window, exercises intensely, has fun often, and makes an effort to include healthy superfoods. Not only would they look and feel better, they would perform better. They've put their bodies in the appropriate environment for them to maintain a healthy weight that has them looking great. Supporting this imaginary stool is important. It doesn't matter how much we restrict calories. If the stool isn't balanced properly, we'll go back to the weight we were at before, perhaps even higher. In trying to restrict calories extremely, we might even inflict long-term metabolic damage. Optimizing the weight set point balance. So how exactly does someone get started in changing their body weight set point? Let's take a look at each category individually. Diet. There were four subcategories for diet. Those were types of food, amount of food, food timing, and the gut microbiome. 
you can think of the first three categories as the different avenues you can take to optimize your own diet. For instance, intermittent fasting, which focuses on food timing, might be more suited for you depending on your lifestyle. Amount of food comes down to how much you eat throughout the day. If you're a busy person, this might be easy to accomplish since you wouldn't even have time for snacking. The types of food come down to your selection of food sources. This would be easy to achieve if you've already meal prepped before. You can see that there's wiggle room between these first three subcategories. Your goal is to perfect these three subcategories to the best of your ability while still allowing for a diet plan that is sustainable over years rather than weeks. Individual variability. You might only be capable of accommodating for two of the three subcategories in your lifestyle. That doesn't matter though. If your best means achieving 80% success on types of food and food timing, then you can probably afford to aim for 40% success around the amounts of food. The amounts, types, and timings of your food will depend on you and your variability. By no means will you figure this out overnight. This is a process of trial and error that gets better over time. The name of the game on these first three is to balance your blood sugar. For everyone that looks different. Some need frequent meals while others do better intermittent fasting. Some will respond better to low carb whereas others will respond better to low fat. At the core of it all should be a focus on blood sugar levels and keeping them stable. The final category, gut microbiome, plays into the first three subcategories. This subcategory maintains an eye towards the health of our gut microbiome by incorporating prebiotics, which are various forms of dietary fiber, probiotics, which are healthy bacteria found in different kinds of food, while excluding processed sugars and fried foods. This should be a standard baseline that we all follow. Activity. Activity comes down to a couple aspects. The amount of exercise and the intensity of exercise. I define amount of exercise as the amount of time that is spent above 60% of one's max heart rate. To reach this 60% max heart rate isn't hard. Typically all it takes is a brisk walk. Intensity of exercise is a bit different. It's a measure of how close to max heart rate a workout gets or how much work is accomplished during a workout. In physics, work is defined as force times distance. The higher the force applied, the more work that's being done. Similarly, the further that force travels, the more work is also being done. So as an example, lifting heavy weights is considered a high work activity. Based on the alternative definition of exercise intensity, a few high intensity intervals will cause the heart rate to increase to a point nearer to max heart rate. So as an example, hill sprints are a form of high intensity exercise. Everyone's mix of exercise will look different. Again, it comes down to individual trial and error. I personally prefer to maximize the amount of exercise that I get by going for walks. I then supplement that with a few high intensity exercise sessions. These are typically a powerlifting session in the gym or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class. Beyond just burning calories. Understanding the importance of these two subcategories and experimenting is important. Eventually, we'll land on a mix that unveils an explosive amount of energy in us and has our weight dropping naturally. Exercise shouldn't solely be a means of just burning calories. The benefits are endless and they include stress relief, hormonal modulation, and epigenetic expression. That aids in fat burning. All of these factors play into moving the weight set point into a new place. Looking to burn calories alone will not lend itself to overall reprogramming of our body weight set point. Instead, we'll stress ourselves out and put ourselves through what turns out to be a very temporary habit. We need to find a routine that's sustainable and contributes to improved overall health. If we find a routine that makes exercise about introducing occasional high intensity activity and a large amount of low intensity activity will have accomplished both of the factors that play into changing the body weight set point for good. Lifestyle. This category is a bit more difficult to measure. To me, this one is a bit more spiritual. How happy are you with the way things are going? Do you find yourself dragging an unwilling body through life? Maybe it's going to require a change of circumstances for you to be happy and content. However, I like to think that in most cases it comes down to mindset 
Are we grateful for everything we've got? Are we grateful for the position we currently find ourselves in? If we are, then our next objective should be to give our current responsibilities 110%. We should go to bed ready for a restful night of sleep, knowing that we gave the day everything we had. Nothing should come in the way of our sleep. Even still, it seems like the most common cause of poor sleep is a chattering mind. It doesn't stop if we don't build that also important mindfulness muscle through different forms of meditation. Aside from life circumstances or stress, sleep can be impacted by diet, exercise, inconsistent routines, blue light exposure, phone or computer screens, and stimulant usage such as caffeine. Fixing this should be our biggest priority. Learning to let loose. Perhaps we struggle to fix it because we don't manage our stress effectively. Do we let loose frequently enough? This is an important question to ask ourselves. The last thing we want is burnout. Stress impacts our sleep and our hormonal levels in ways that we can't imagine. Learning to manage this stress or becoming more resilient to it can help us to manage our weight set point, believe it or not. Part of letting loose is making sure that we expose ourselves to the sun frequently. Not only does this allow us to synthesize vitamin D, it also exposes us to important bacteria. Bacteria that's necessary for the maintenance of our bacterial flora in the nose, eyes, mouth, gut, and skin. This ensures that our immunity stays high and that we keep out unwanted parasites that could impact our weight set point or overall well-being. Lifestyle habits might also include occasional stressors like sauna usage or cold baths. The benefits of these habits, especially for readjusting the weight set point, are clear. The cold hard truth. I still haven't been able to understand why, but as a society we tend to fixate too much on one small part of a larger truth. As an example, calorie restriction but not calorie type, or exercise amount but not exercise type. We attempt to simplify things while Im omitting very important details. Perhaps it's because these small truths tend to work for the majority. However, if we were to follow up to check on their results, we might see that these small truths didn't accomplish what they claimed to. What I'm saying is that if we look at people who cut calories for four weeks, they look great. We start thinking that we should use the same approach. What we don't see is the relapse that most people go through soon after. Make this a fun experiment. Make this an experiment and have fun with it, but don't get too attached to anything that isn't lending itself to your goal. For example, I personally like to incorporate the occasional extreme measure like long-term fasting, but by no means do I rely on this to impact my weight. In fact, I recognize that long-term fasting probably won't make a difference in my weight. My success is dictated by my lifestyle and my habits. If our lifestyle and habits are focused on improving the categories we discussed here, we'll see improvement in our weight. That simple. It just requires patience and constantly tweaking. Everything is connected. Notice that there is an interplay between the three categories. They all play into one another. For example, improving our diet can improve our resilience to stressful events, which could improve our sleep. Maybe increased sun exposure leads to a reduced appetite. It's all possible because really the three categories mentioned are just one. They need to be broken up for the sake of understanding, but the aim should be to find harmony in all aspects by making all three categories one disciplined yet sustainable lifestyle. Keep on aiming for improvement and never stop. As you walk this long and endless path, you'll discover new potential. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this article, you can find more like it at www.benefit.com. It's www.bannafit.com.